Hey everyone, it is me, Ash C. Welcome back to my channel. This is episode, no, season two, episode one of Rap Talk. So let's just get straight into it because I got a two-parter for y'all and it's gonna be so much that I'm talking about. And it's it's a lot that happens. So brace yourself, get your snacks, get your popcorn, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> so um, Beyonce performed in Dubai. I mean, come on, who was expecting that? So I knew that Beyonce was coming when um, I seen her backup dancer, not her backup dancer, her dance captain, Ashley. She, you know, posted on TikTok like, oh, you know, I'm going to rehearsal. And we like, the Beehive, because I'm part of the Beehive. I'm like, rehearsal for what? Which way are you going? But, but you know, it, you know, Beyonce is a very private NDA type of person, so we weren't gonna find out anyways. But it later uh, found out, we later find out through Yvette, um, Beyonce's publicist, that she will be performing to commemorate the opening of the Atlantis, Atlantis, the Royal Resort. It's like an upscale resort in Dubai. And the gig, according to TMZ, 24 million. She got 24 million to perform. She has a no phone policy. You guys know that Beyonce is just, is just she has become so private. She's a very strategic person. So, you know, the NDAs was probably popping, no phones, but people was recording anyways. And on my TikTok for you page, I literally seen nothing but different angles of the performance. Beyonce, I ain't gonna post it here because I don't need you to come for me, but I'm gonna show y'all these beautiful pictures. She looked gorgeous. And apparently she had gotten some foot surgery, so she didn't do too much dancing, but she did do singing. She didn't perform any songs from Renaissance, which is her uh, new album that came out like her, um, in the middle of last year, but she did perform with her daughter, Blue Ivy, brown skin girl. And I thought that it was so beautiful just seeing her, you know, you know, just be a mom. Like really, I, I, I've been listening to Beyonce since I was Blue Ivy's age. And just to see that she has a kid and she has just this whole like career and she's married and just everything, just everything that Beyonce has just become like, I can't believe it as like a long, like stand in fan. So it was amazing to see. So I'm gonna let y'all know Beyonce is coming. The tours and stuff are dropping. Save your money, save your tax returns, save it all because Beyonce is coming. I don't wanna hear, oh, I shouldn't in a no. Speaking of performances, Drake actually performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. And there also is a teased tour with him and 21 Savage. So the Apollo the Apollo performance. It kind of was like an ode to Aubrey, ode to Drake in his career. It kind of started where he was, you know, in his room. Um, that At that time, he was on Degrassi, and then it kind of shows the label rejections. And then after that, it kind of progresses and it, it kind of goes and progresses on to like his biggest hits. Um, and the set list, like the, the B-sides that he did, bro, man, I wish I was there because I seen like a promo for this, but it was nowhere to buy tickets. You just had to like win. And a, performing at Apollo is a big thing because people, I mean like Monique, Patti LaBelle, so many other like figures in the entertainment industry have performed at the Apollo Theater. It's a big, big thing. So for him to do this was really good. And he also brought out Dipset. He brought out Jim Jones and Cameron. And he actually, and Drake was actually wearing the same pink fur that Cameron had on. So it was, it was like really, 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 really cool to see. And so what Drake said about this show was that I wanted to make this show about gratitude. This was a little story that we put together. My deep love, love for my family my dear friends and for each and every one of you that have been supporting me for a long time he said we don't need to say how long it's gonna we don't we don't need to say how long it's gonna make it sound like we're all getting old so it's just like drake is almost 40 and he's been out i've been listening to drake since 2007 when he had that song with trey songs called replacement girl and i've been watching him on degrassi since i was a kid and i'm 25 now it's just like Drake has literally been, his music has literally been there in each point of my life. Like best I ever had, um, room for improvement. Um, when brand new came out, um, close to my, like Drake, Drake is actually up there. He's a go. And I'm, and besides the character and everything, you, you can't, deny his music and his impact 
on uh, our culture. So this was amazing. I wish I was there at the Apollo Theater. If you were there, let me know because, you know, I want to be there. Okay. Carisha P. Carisha P. So Carisha Please is a podcast. Uh, it's filmed on YouTube. It's filmed for YouTube on the Revolt channel, which is uh, P. Diddy, Sean Combs' platform. And so on this um, show, Carisha Please, Carisha basically talks to different um, people in the music industry. She's talked to Sweetie, G Herbo, um, Santana, JT, um, Diddy, of course. And so she kind of like, is like the hood Oprah like the hood Oprah and she kind of asks the hard-hitting questions that we want to know she asks the questions that are really spicy and she's not afraid to get controversial I'm pretty sure that these questions are cleared with their management but she probably has a good rapport with these people and literally like I feel like this show is literally for the culture like so she had the baddest Trina Trina is basically like her auntie godmother and she's been knowing Trina for a lot because for a while because they um, grew up in Miami and Trina actually knew Carisha's mother. This interview was really, really good. It, it, it didn't really feel like an interview. It felt like a conversation uh, a conversation between an auntie and a niece or a godmama and, a, and, and the child. Like that's how it felt. And I really feel like this is one of my favorite interviews. They spoke on a lot of topics. They talked about Trina losing her mother and her niece. They talked about um, Trina's legacy and impact when it comes to just hip hop, especially in the Miami and the South. And then they talked about sexual experiences. And so Trina was asked by Carisha, do you like golden showers? If you don't know what that is, don't look it up. I'm gonna tell you the PG-13 way. It's basically when you release number one on someone. If you're into that, cool. If you're not, whatever. Anyways, so Carisha admitted that she liked getting rained on and Trina admitted that she likes doing the raining. So P. Diddy, Carisha P, all of that was trending. And it was so funny. But I feel like, in my opinion, it's a little bit, People could say it's a little bit tasteless, but like Carisha is nobody's Martha Stewart. Shoot, Martha Stewart went to jail. Never mind. Carisha is nobody's like. I about to say Drew Barrymore. She's nobody's like Oprah or Drew Barrymore. She is authentically herself. Like her music reflects her lifestyle. Well. Let me just shut up. Anyways, she has like a, her lyrics and her music are very raunchy. She's very outspoken. So I don't, that, that's her brand. That's very on brand for her. I've seen a lot of people saying like, uh, you know, you're exposing too much. And I'm like, that's her. That's her brand. That's what makes her relatable and authentic. I, in my opinion, I would not be telling people my sexual experiences and what I do in the bedroom because it's really nobody's business. And I'm a child of God, so I ain't do nothing in the bedroom. Period. I don't do nothing. I'll be chilling. Be yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> no. So our girl, you thought I was feeling you? That a uh, much. Ah! Ice Spice releases an EP and it's called like, I hope so. Wait a minute. Is it? Is it called like? It's called like, because that's what she says. Like, you know? <laughs> Pero like, but not. Nah, I really enjoy Ice Spice a lot because her music is like for the baddies. It's for the the shy, the shy baddies, the, the ones that don't be saying too much, but I really enjoyed the um, EP. It's really just fun. I don't necessarily take Ice Spice ser seriously as, sorry, I don't really take Ice Spice seriously as like a lyricist or like a rapidy rap rapper, like a lyricist, but I do take her serious as an artist. And the girl, they thought she was a one hit wonder, but it's like her music is easy listening. It's quotable. It's IG baddie captions. Like it's for the girls. And I feel like if you don't get it, then you're just not one of us. Like you're just not, it's for the girls and the girls, you know, it's for, it's for us. And so I just love her. She's so sweet. She's so pretty. Now. The breakout hit was Princess Diana because she is our Princess Diana. Like, she can't do no wrong. People looked at her old tweets. She has not been a colorist because a lot of lighter-skinned women, not women, but a lot of 
people, I could say a lot of like, even black people, we have the tendency of like bashing and saying bad things about dark women, we dark skinned women when we were younger. And she has no record of that. She's, she's a smart, she's a smart cookie. And I, and I'm, and I'm really excited to see where her career is going to go this year. And so then they tried to say that her and Lotto have some sort of beef. So it, Lotto was on like a red carpet and someone asked her to complete the bikini bottom lyric. How could I lose them already chose? Like. Okay, so the last question uh -huh. is how can I lose if I'm already chose? Chose. Okay, okay, she got you. But she and Lotto really didn't know. And and I don't think that was any shade because like sometimes with TikTok and this music, you literally will only know like one line and it's not even no one's fault or anything. It just, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And so then, you know, they're trying to say that one of her lyrics kind of dissed Lotto, saying Lotto steals her emotes, like her poses and all that stuff. But I feel like this is how beef between fan bases are started like literally I don't think those two women even have any type of beef I hate that that is exactly what happened between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj it's literally the fan bases that buzz in their ear to try to get them to think this and it just makes a mess like I'm not saying that it has to be unity in women in hip-hop because not everybody gotta be friends but let it be respect all across the board that's all I'm saying